Test three, black to move. You can pause the position here. A glance would convince many players that black is in trouble. This puzzle Salman gives as for level 2000 to 2200. White has the lead in development, more space, threatens to capture the pawn on c6, and even has the superior pawn structure. In fact, other than their two rather inactive bishops, it's hard to see what black has to crow about. I featured this position in a lecture that had that I gave that had about 200 spectators. The ratings ranged from beginner to 2200 plus. I asked the crowd who was better here. The vast majority felt that white had a considerable advantage, while none of the 200 thought that black had more than equality. Explaining the rating spread. A tough one. I wouldn't be surprised to see some masters missing it. Somehow it's anti-intuitive to give up the coveted two bishops and to hand white a protected pass pawn to boot. Nevertheless, as you grow to appreciate a knight's blockading powers, you will begin to actively strive to create such situations. Bishop takes e5, exclamation point. Wonderful. Black happily gives away his two bishops in order to hand white a protected pass pawn. This is either very deep or very stupid. However, since I gave it an exclamation point, you should probably vote for the former. Note that one queen e8... Retaining the two bishops while also defending c6 is a major mistake since knight a to c4 grants white the advantage for all the reasons mentioned earlier. After bishop e7, to stop the bishop from being captured, one problem black will face is their weakness down the e-file, which white can highlight by the simple rook e2, followed by rook a to e1, or even just knight to f3. Unfortunately, f takes e5, fails to f4, bishop f2, f3, when black has a strong attack. Sorry. A very logical move that both denies white the use of the d4 square and prepares to place the c8 bishop on b7, where it will laser its way through white's position. An interesting, an interesting alternative is 2 g5, trying to blast open the g-file, or, if white takes on g5, hoping to push the f-pawn down white's throat. This demented-looking move is fully playable, but black doesn't need to be in any hurry. He can always come back to this advance of the g-pawn once he tightens up his position and gets his bishop on its ideal diagonal. A picture-perfect blockading knight. It's time to take a look at the position after c5. What has black accomplished? One key point is that the e-file is now closed. White's pawns are also on dark squares. This pawn structure significantly curtails the usefulness of the e3 bishop. Once black's bishop reaches b7, the superiority of this bishop over its e3 counterpart won't be open to question. All of this should certainly make us feel good about black's prospects, but aren't we forgetting about white's protected past e-pawn? Not at all. That pawn is closing down the e-file and is firmly blockaded by the e6 knight. This fine, flexible square, it allows the knight to exert influence over c5, d4, f4, and g5, wouldn't be safe if the e-file was open, so some might label the e5 pawn as a traitor. Simply put, after 2c5, white's pieces have no pen penetration points or targets to attack. White also lacks a pawn break. On the other hand, black's pieces will prove to be far more active than white's, and the g7, g5 pawn break will hang over the other side like the swords of Damocles. Rooks belong in open files, don't they? White is happy to follow general rules, but they'll soon, they'll soon discover that the d-file is a road to nowhere. Quietly moving their queen to safety while giving their knight some support. Other queen moves like queen e7 and queen h4 are also good. This is an added bonus that it threatens the f4 pawn and tries to provoke g3, in which case the bishop on this diagonal will become very strong and have mate threats. So I like queen h4 the best. 
And now black has to choose between four bishop to b7. It would be hard to resist placing this bishop on the tasty a8 h1 diagonal with g5 to follow, or the immediate uh, g5, uh, f takes g5 and f4, so with an immediate attack. This attack, now or in another move or two, is completely justified because black's bishop, f pawn, knight, queen, and rook would all take part in the festivities. Those who are dying to get more information on past pawns and blockading will find it in part 8.